Stop burying the bass drum beater. 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 Stop burying. I know you rock guys are gonna hate me while you jazz guys might be applauding me. But today I'm gonna show you why every drummer should seriously consider this technique. Believe it or not, there are three huge benefits to exclusively bouncing the beater. Hey everybody, welcome to the Non-Glamorous Drummer, the channel all about teaching you the core skills that help you make music faster. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe. Okay, one quick thing I need to say before we get going, and that is that I'm approaching this topic from the standpoint of heel down playing. I'm primarily a heel down player, it works for me, I can get as much volume or speed as I need to, uh, regardless of what a lot of uh, the big heel up advocates might try to argue. Um, but I like playing heel down, it works really well for me. I think also a lot of taller guys have more of a tendency to do that because unless we're gonna sit crazy high, heel up often isn't comfortable if we've got long legs. Uh, but that's a topic for another video. The point is, it does not matter whether or not you play heel up or heel down, and I wanna make that very clear that I don't care what technique you use, it doesn't matter. You can get as much speed or volume or control either way. All that matters is what is most comfortable to you. And when I'm teaching a beginner student, I let them do what feels best to them, and then we go from there. Because the same principles of foot technique and pedal physics, it applies no matter what, and we use actually a lot of the same concept techniques regardless of whether we're heel up or heel down. So don't get hung up on that, don't worry about it. But if there are any points that you disagree with as I'm going through this video, it could be because you're a heel up player, and so maybe some of these points don't apply as much to you, but I think overall, uh, most of these will still apply, and especially when we start talking about bass drum sound, so stick with me. All right, first big benefit of bouncing the beater is that when you bounce the beater, that transfers all the energy from the impact of the beater on the head away from your foot and not up your leg. It's just like if you take your stick and you hit a drum like this, where's the energy gonna go? Because it goes out the end of the stick, uh, it's gonna go up your arm because you're gonna be squeezing tight in this case because you're pressing down. And so you feel that shock of that impact. Uh, not to mention it sounds terrible here. You get the idea, if you're trying to bury your sticks in the drums, you're hitting a hard surface and stopping them, uh, well naturally that energy wants to send the stick back out, but because you're stopping it from going back out, that energy has to go up your arm. And the same thing happens with your leg, where if you go and you press down, you feel, number one, you feel that tightness and you feel that stiffness. You're having to create a lot of stiffness and tightness in your joints, your knee, uh, ankle, foot, toes, everything in order to bury the beater. And most likely if you're a heel up player, you're probably doing it like this. So you literally feel that all the way up here in your upper leg. And if you're heel down, I think heel down, you probably feel it the most in your knee. And so a couple years ago, I started to notice that at the end of a long gig, I was burying the beater a lot when playing loudly. And I started to notice I was getting knee pain. Like my knee was starting to hurt around here after playing so much of And I thought, you know what? I might need to make some adjustments here because I don't wanna deal with this any longer. And I realized that I'm having to put way too much energy into this and too much of that energy is getting sent back up my leg, which isn't where it needs to go. You can also think about it this way. The reason why we don't bury our sticks in the drums or wouldn't bury a mallet in the floor tom or in the rack tom is because the laws of physics say that it doesn't make sense to do so. It absolutely makes no sense to hit something and then stop that motion. And with a bass drum pedal, like we kind of talked about in the previous video, our spring on the pedal is creating that false rebound. It's creating a lot of rebound for us so that if we have the drum tuned low, we're still getting rebound. And so we don't want to fight that. Why would we fight that? Why don't we just let it happen naturally? Drumming is all about natural, smooth motions. And you've heard me talk about this a lot if you've watched the channel for a while. When you're hitting drums with your hands, you always want to be thinking about where you're going next. I like to say the shortest distance between two drums is an arc. When you let your stick bounce, and you're already moving to the next drum, you end up moving in these arc motions, and that's the key to smooth navigation around the kit, wherever you wanna go, however fast you wanna go, et cetera, et cetera. And so it's unnatural to ever stop that motion. What is very unnatural is to go I mean, think about how illogical that is. Instead, it makes more, actually, with my right hand, it even makes more sense. That versus where we have this smooth back and forth, whenever we stop the motion, it actually takes more energy to stop it than to let the motion continue. And so we wanna have that motion going on, we wanna direct the motion toward the next thing we're gonna hit. 
and so on and so on. So that same thing applies to our foot. Why would we want to stop the motion when it actually takes more energy to stop it? Why not let things keep moving? It's kind of like how if you're playing at this tempo. Well, obviously right there, it would be extremely illogical to bury the beater and it might even be impossible to bury it. It feels really weird to it. I think it's a lot harder to. It feels more natural just to let it bounce and move naturally. Versus. And so you can see how ridiculous burying it is over bouncing it in that scenario. And so I know that if you're playing like a loud four on the floor, you might feel like that makes sense, letting it bury like that. But let's keep things in motion. That way the energy is moving out away from your foot, away from your leg, and there's less stress here and you're actually less tired at the end of the night. Benefit of bouncing the beater, number two, you get a much more full, deep, and resonant sound out of your kick drum. Now, this can vary. The amount of difference you hear can depend on what kind of heads you've got on it, uh, what kind of muffling, where the heads are tuned, et cetera, et cetera. If we have zero muffling and both heads are tuned pretty high, so like a jazz bebop tuning with a really live drum, there's a huge difference and it sounds awful when you bury it. With more of a rock setup where maybe you're tuned lower, you've got some muffling, there might be less of a difference, but it's still gonna be there and it's still gonna be subtle. The thing is, if you're recording or you're even in a live situation where, there, where the bass drum is mic'd and you're working with an engineer, that engineer is gonna hear the difference between burying the beater and bouncing the beater. So let me do a couple of different playing examples here for you and we'll see if you can tell a difference. My miking setup, I've got these two overheads here that are actually picking up a lot of the kick, especially the front of it here. And then I've got a Beta 52 inside the drum, sitting on a towel that is not touching either head. So basically there's not really much muffling here. And I'm actually gonna take out the foam ring right here. I've got one of those Evans EMAT heads. So at this point we have no muffling, pretty much. We've just got a wadded up towel in the middle of the drum that's not touching the heads. The Beta 52 is sitting on that. And then I've got a ribbon mic that's a couple feet out in front of the drum to kind of capture the low end out there. And we'll see if you can really tell a difference between burying and bouncing. The funny thing is I don't like the sound of this tuning as much without the foam ring. This kind of helps me get away with a, a lower tuning here on this head. It starts to get a little bit flappy without it. So let's do this. Let's tune things up a little bit higher. It's not gonna be total all out bebop, but we'll go higher enough that I think you're gonna tell more of a difference this next go around. So at this point, because we have both heads tuned a lot higher, and we have zero muffling, the drum is gonna resonate a lot more, which means the felt head pressing down on one of the heads is going to choke out a lot of that resonance, so you're really gonna hear a difference. You can also hear one of those last times when I was burying, I got a little bit of flutter, where it kind of went a little bit of bounce. That's the other kind of danger with when you're burying, you have to make sure you totally bury it and you don't end up with any of that extra flutter, um, which means you gotta put a lot of extra pressure in, which kind of takes us back to that first point if you're having to really stiffen up your leg. I could hear, I, w I didn't even have my ears in, I'm just listening to the room sound of the kick. I could hear a huge difference there, I know you will too. And I'm gonna mix this to make sure we're able to really bring out that difference because the thing is, if depending on how you have your kick drum tuned, depending on the room you're playing in, the miking setup, there really can be a big difference between the sounds. And so you wanna make sure that you're not driving your engineer crazy with playing some notes bounced and other notes buried because it can start to sound really weird and it can really start to drive the engineer nuts because it's like, well, the drum sounded one way here and it sounded a different way here. At least be consistent. Okay, so benefit to bouncing the beater number th three, number three, Bouncing the beater can potentially result in a lot less shoe damage. You know, we were talking about foot stress and leg stress, and if you're, this is the, 
the sort of the benefit that might apply more to if you were burying the beater from a heel down position. And a while back, I've got a couple of props here. Um, these are some, some of my old shoes I was wearing about a year to three years ago, I think. I think I got these in, I wanna say early 2017, and I had to retire these shoes almost a year ago. And so I was doing a lot of burying the beater, wearing these shoes, and what was happening, if you're playing heel down, and you're playing loudly, and uh, you're burying the beater, you're gonna have to sit fairly far back from the kick drum in order for your leg to be comfortable. Um, or you're sitting pretty high up, but most likely if you're sitting high, you're probably gonna lift your heel up and go to a more heel up position. But I like to sit not super high for my height. So if I'm bearing the beater, I'm having to put a lot of forward pressure onto the foot plate. I'm not just pressing down, I'm also pressing forward to make sure that pedal stays buried. And so what was happening was my foot, my shoe was sliding up the pedal, basically into the chain and into the, the support bars of the pedal. And so you can see on this shoe where I was getting a lot of wear here, from the support bar on the right. I was getting some wear right here from the chain. Of course, I have this hole right here, straight up hole that I think just came from my big toe because my big toes are big. And then some wear right here from the left side of the pedal also. For me, burying the beater meant kind of destroying my shoes. And I have some other shoes older than these that really got destroyed. So the point is, if you switch to bouncing the beater, well then you're no longer having to drive your foot so far forward. And so I can comfortably rest right back here where my heel is actually on the heel plate. And so I can look down there and always see the end of the foot plate and have like an inch and a half, two inches to spare. And I'm never gonna slide all the way up here because I'm never trying to go like that. Which is why a second ago when I was doing some of those buried examples, I got a little bit of flutter because I wasn't actually putting enough pressure there to keep the beater on the head. And so if you're going to play, if you're gonna bury, you're really having to put a lot of pressure on there, probably from a heel up position. Otherwise, if you're heel down, your foot's gonna have to slide so far forward, you're running into the chain. I did end up finding some workarounds for that back when that first started happening. I got some of those denim patches at Walmart that you might use to like sew up a hole in your jeans. And I put some Velcro on them and I, I wrapped the patch around the chain, Velcroed it tight. You could also just gaff tape it, it doesn't matter. But that way my foot was running into the, uh, the denim instead of the chain. And so that helped prolong the life of my shoes, that's why these aren't totally chewed up compared to the ones before them, uh, just because I was running into denim instead of running into sharp metal edges. And so that definitely helped. And some pedal companies put toe plates on their pedals. I think toe plates are annoying because, I don't know, I feel like my foot always runs into the toe plate and I don't wanna feel that there. I know for some of you that might be the solution. You just like having a toe plate on your pedal and that's, you know, problem solved. Your foot never slides up too far. I think toe plates are kind of annoying, and so I never liked having them, and so I was willing to create my own workaround because of that. But the reason I threw in that bit back at the beginning of the video about heel up versus heel down playing, I think this is an issue that probably would not arise for you if you were playing heel up. Most likely your foot's not gonna slide all the way down there. This is more of the heel down issue. So if you don't relate to that, that's probably why. But I think those first two benefits you can still very much relate to. No matter your technique, uh, everybody's gonna get a different sound, whether or not they bury or they bounce their beater. And everybody is gonna have a looser, more relaxed leg with less shock going up it if they're bouncing versus burying. So, to sum all of this up, here's my challenge for you. Try playing from here on out, or maybe just for the next week. Challenge yourself the next few practice sessions or maybe the next gig or so, to only bounce the beater. No matter how hard or heavy you're playing, only bounce the beater. You can still play just as hard. I'm hitting that really hard. It doesn't, you don't have to equate hard playing, heavy playing with burying the beater. Or just because your drum is tuned really low doesn't mean you need to bury the beater because maybe it, it does feel less abrupt if the head's tuned really low. Uh, but don't equate loud playing with burying the beater. It doesn't have to be that way. So challenge yourself to bouncing the beater exclusively and yeah, it's gonna feel a little bit weird at first, um, but this is the kind of thing that is going to help you out in the long run. In the short term, it's gonna feel weird. It was the same way for me when I made that decision. I think it was about a year ago. I said, okay, I'm gonna only bounce the beater. And so I started doing that and it did feel weird, but after a couple practice sessions, a couple gigs, a few weeks into it, I didn't really think about it anymore. And it became much more natural to just bounce the beater. My leg felt better. My knee didn't hurt at the end of a three or four hour gig. And I just felt like my technique had actually improved a lot and I had less pain, less fatigue. 
you name it. And if at this point you're like, Steven, you're crazy, you don't know what you're talking about, I've been burying the beater for 20 years, I'm a metal drummer, I play in a heavy rock band, I'm always gonna bury the beater. Okay, that's fine. Um, if I couldn't sell you on this, I get it. You do your own thing. But whatever you do, be intentional about what you're doing. Either bury the beater for the whole song or bounce the beater for the whole song. Because you will drive an engineer crazy if you're playing something like where you're going back and forth because that's weird to mix and that means you've got some kick notes that don't have as much low end and some that are shorter and some that are longer. So don't drive the engineer crazy and depending on the room you're playing in and the way it's mic'd, it really can make a huge difference. So know that and just be intentional. Say, all right, I'm going to bury the beater this whole time, this whole song, or I'm gonna bounce the beater this whole song or even this whole gig. So feel free to leave a comment below agreeing with me or disagreeing with me. I know that this is kind of controversial and so I know some people are gonna disagree, that's fine. Freedom of speech, you can say what you want to below. I believe this method of bouncing the beater is better because you're transferring the energy of the beater out and away from your foot and not up your leg. So you're saving your body, you're uh, protecting your, your joints here and it's just a much more natural feel. You're getting a more natural, deep, full sound out of your drum with more low end. And you're keeping your foot on a better spot on the foot plate for less shoe wear and making sure you're not running into the chain. Hey, thanks for watching. I certainly hope this video has helped you out and given you some direction as far as working on your kick drum technique and maybe it's given you some incentive to change your technique and accept my challenge of bouncing the beater exclusively. Uh, hey, before you go, if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe and also go grab my free gift to you. This is just a free guide uh, five simple steps for conquering one-handed hi-hat 16s. It's one of those cool but kind of elusive topics a lot of drummers work on. We all want to sound like Jeff Percaro and get our Rosanna shuffled down. But figuring out stick placement and molar technique and how to grip and how to put all that together, a lot of times it's just difficult, but I've broken it down for you in five easy to follow steps along with some troubleshooting methods and ways to build up that wrist strength. So go check that out and I'll also email you some additional tips for freeing up your left foot and really improving your left foot technique and left foot coordination. So uh, this is your solution to really boosting your hi-hat game as well. I know we've been talking about right foot here in these videos, but get that left foot going too. Thanks guys so much for watching and I'll see you next week. We're gonna be talking about a very powerful but underrated foot technique that everybody needs to use regardless of whether you're a heel up or heel down player. So stay tuned for that.